Hello there, it's me Rama, and this is the first of my UE5 videos because somebody requested a color picker for UE5. Here it is. And first I'm going to demonstrate picking from the scene. You can't see the cursor, but it's moving around. And to facilitate eye and body coordination, I'm going to now demonstrate a human color palette picker person. So I'm going to the foot, which is now yellow. I'm heading up the calf, which turned into green. You can see outer thigh is blue, inner thigh is tealish. Now I'm heading over to the hand, which is red, traveling up the arm, the tricep, which is yellow. Left side of the head is red, right side of the head is yellow. You get the idea. So I'm picking from the person. I can also pick from the UI itself. Here's the border of the top title. Now I'm heading over to the heart. If you look carefully, I'm proceeding in a gradient across from the left to the right. And now back again. It's probably even more fun for you because you can't see the cursor because you have to imagine what I'm doing. So I'm traveling back and forth along the heart. And that's the picking from the scene option. You can also do the usual and pick from the actual picker. I'm heading around and let's say you want a really bright, I'm going to turn this up, let's say you want a really, really bright color, right? Brighter than this. This red's pretty bright, but if you go to advanced, you can increase to, let's say, 2, right? But let's go up to 20, and now, let's see, V got one up to 20 now, so now you can zoom around and everything is very nice and bright. You can also play with saturation and you can change the, you could do hex code, RGB, you can also save colors. You can see here I have a bunch of saved colors from before, but let's get a nice green color. Let's add it to the set. And now I'm going to go back to hyper pink and red. So there you have it. Lots of fun options. This is the UE4 color picker. You now UE5 color picker, courtesy of Nick Darnell. He's the one who gave this to us by putting it in app framework and the engine code so that I could access it and bring it to you. And that's that. Now I'll show you, in case you wonder how the technical details work, from the level blueprint, begin play. Call your thing. Do you know how many times I've made a new thing and not called it from begin play and wonder why it didn't work? And how many times I've not done this? Telling you. Important things. And this is game and UI. Don't hide the cursor. Show the mouse cursor. And now here I took a shaft, which is the one over there, and I already added a um, parameter inside of the material so that I could set it. And then I'm, the next step is you have to actually make it dynamic at runtime, creating a dynamic material instance. Now this is uh, a reference to the UI element, right? Joyful color picker. And then I'm setting it, I'm setting my, I called it dynamic in my UI. So let me show you that. So here, the color picker itself, I scaled this because I wanted it to be nice and big but because uh, if you do it this way it just the elements just spread apart but you can use render to make it bigger and one fun feature is I did do the editor thing so that it'll update if you change the primary factor which is joy color the primary variable it'll actually update live in your designer and that's that other than that uh, there's not much else to show here. Look under Victory Plugin to find the color picker. And then over in Graph, you can see my variable dynamic, which I'm linking to. Oh, from Designer, if you click on the thing, you can say here, on color changed, the event, view, it'll show up as add if you haven't added it yet. And then you can add it here. And here I'm accessing the dynamic material. Make sure you check whether it's valid, very important. Then I named the parameter custom color. I'm setting it, not that complicated. If you want to set an initial value when it's first created, give a 0.2 second delay because the thing is still setting up. If you find that it's not updating to your new color when you construct, just add in a little delay. And that's it. Bonus feature, in case you were curious how exactly this thing works. I 
was just goofing off before this video for you, and I made a little... This has got to be Material Domain User Interface. Texture Sample comes with the Engine Heat Map Gradient. I multiplied the tiling by 0.7. Apparently there's a thing called Get User Interface UV. Never heard of it before. Uh, but it this thing... I was just, again, playing. And apparently that is the UV gradient for each letter. So each symbol gets its own gradient. Pretty neat, huh? So every letter gets the full gradient, the UVs of each letter, each symbol. Pretty fancy, I thought, on Epic's uh, behalf. <laughs> They're doing. So that comes with the engine. And then I did a hue shift to get a slightly different color range going. I did this to even out the gradient. And then I made it brighter, and that's that. Then, to do it, you have to use the rich text block. And then, here, you can see rich text block. Rather than create my own data table, I just set it over our default. And I plugged in the material, and that was it. Then I added a border, and that's the whole thing. That's how everything works that you just saw. Now, of course, we have to end by going back in game. And I really want to go back to Hyper Pink. Okay, I feel complete. Hope you're having fun. Enjoy your free color picker. This will work in a package game. That's what I meant about the being in runtime app framework. That means you can package this with your, with your game and everybody can use it in your package setting. Everybody can pick their colors this way. Have a lovely day. <laughs>